I have woken up today with the entire album of High School Musical 3 stuck in my head. Why? I don't know. But I'm gonna go listen to it. Remember these? We're finally gonna use them. So, if you haven't watched it yet, go to. Oops, sorry about the sound of the cars. If you haven't watched it yet, go to my. What did I call it? The Ink Recipes Making Ink Homemade Ink. That one, whatever. I'll put it in the cards. My uh, video from last week where I made uh, three different inks from homemade natural recipes that I found online. So today, of course, we're gonna have an inky tea time. Here's my tea. Where's yours? Drawing with them. Uh, I think I don't, I haven't really thought through much about what I'm gonna draw. I kind of feel like drawing blueberries. I woke up wanting blueberries because yesterday we went berry picking and got a bunch of blueberries and currants and one of the uh, inks is blackberry even though I didn't pick any blackberries but that's what we're gonna draw I think yes if you want to follow along so let's switch up the camera angle so you can see what I'm drawing and I'll see you guys shortly hello and we're back here's my sketchbook here's my tea I would need to refill it soon, we'll get to that. And then I have the three inks that we made last week, and then an assortment of brushes, I'm not really sure what I'm going to use, but you'll see it throughout the video, and some blotting paper, it's just paper towel. I keep reusing it to like switch out the inks in my pens, in my fountain pens until basically it fills up entirely and I can't use it anymore. <laughs> so let's... Oh, yes, this was from last video. Okay, so actually we're gonna start with pencil and eraser because we're gonna do a quick sketch. I'm gonna speed this part up and then we'll go straight into the painting. We're back in real time. I took a very necessary break to get myself some black currants from the ones I picked yesterday because I just want something to snack on. So let's put this here and we're done with the drawing. I left some space here to be able to do a quote because I also want to put these inks in a further calligraphy test. I'm going to start with the leaves and I might use the yellow ink the calendula ink because we don't have green and I don't want to use anything else that is not part of the inks that we made. As for the tea, what I am drinking is a cream earl grey that I got in this tea shop in Bogota called the tea shop. Actually, I think it's just called the tea shop, but this is what it looks like when it's made. It's actually really delicious. I love the combination of doing something creamy with an Earl Grey, which is usually more on the bitter side. All right, so let's uh, pick the direction of the sun. Let's go with that way. What is happening? Why is this blue? <laughs> oh no. Why didn't I start with the blueberries? Oh no, okay, wait, I think it was in the brush already. Guys, this is why you need to clean your brushes. <laughs> All right, pause. All right, let's see if we can salvage this. 
Oh my god, from the beginning. You know what? You know what? Yes, we can. This leaf is just gonna be a little different than the other ones. This was a great start. You see, you know what? This is just gonna be a what to do when you completely ruin your work immediately when you start out video. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give another clean to this brush because I just rubbed it all over that leaf. All right, guys, I gave up on that brush. I'm having a really hard time cleaning it. So here we're going in with a different brush. It's a slightly smaller one. I hope this didn't get too contaminated with that blue. Let's see. Okay, no, this looks like the way it used to. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, sometimes life just doesn't work out the way you want it to. Let's see how I work that in there. <laughs> yeah, so I was looking on blueberry coats and to do here on calligraphy later on. And I found there's this Danish chef who wrote something about the last food he would have on earth or something like that it would be blueberries and cream or something like that. Anyway, I thought it was very cute. So I'm probably just going to write that at the end of this video. And then with that, we will test out the inks on a calligraphy form. As of a life update from me, uh, I just came back from Montreal, which I've been before actually. I went to Montreal about four years ago, was it? I think it was, yeah, about uh, four years ago. And this is the first time I've been back since then. I don't want to talk too much about the trip because I'm actually, next week's video is going to be about Montreal. It's going to be a journal with me. Spoiler! Uh, it's gonna be a journal with me uh, about Montreal, uh, so I'll talk more about that trip then. But it was very short, it was only two days. There's not a huge lot to talk about, but, uh, to talk about it. Okay, so so far, as far as the inks, the calendula is just as light as it was before, but here it just sort of works better when it comes to drawing because it actually provides a really beautiful shade and now because i accidentally threw in that blue <laughs> and contaminated the whole vial is it just me or does it have like a greenish undertone to it i i think i'm making it up but it's possible but that wouldn't have been naturally there or maybe it would have point is it's a very it's a cool toned yellow which I like for what I'm doing right now especially also sorry if the tripod keeps moving I'm actually using this um, I use my phone to record by the way and so I've been using this tripod that with one of those that the legs moves and adjusts. I want to see how well this layers. So I'm gonna layer another shade here. If it doesn't layer well, I'm gonna come in with a different one. But we will see. Yeah, so I use one of those tripods that with the legs that move and bend. Um, and right now I'm working in this like moving desk that has a built-in lamp so I have the tripod um what's the word kind of like interlaced yes interlaced with the lamp itself so that means that when I move the table because the lamp is attached to the table everything moves but that's really the best setup I could find where I'm staying right now My setups change all the time because I am not in the same place for a very long time. That is why keeping consistency, visual consistency in this channel is actually really hard. I try to keep it by 
traveling and keeping the same backgrounds. So I keep some papers or scarves or cloth like this that I'm using as a background right now. It's actually a pillowcase. <laughs> um, so I use stuff like that as backgrounds that I can keep and travel with so that it gives some consistency to my pictures on Instagram and my videos here on YouTube. Um, but other than that, it's kind of hard to keep consistency because I don't have a, a creative space. Uh, a permanent, rather, so I should say, a permanent creative space, like a permanent desk or something, where I keep everything I use for videos and pictures and everything, and, and I just come to it and I take the pictures. I actually have to recreate that space everywhere I go using the stuff I have. So it can get a little difficult keeping consistency, but I try... I mean, the products I'm using and things tend to be similar. Of course, my traveler's notebook is the same all the time because I only use one. So that gives some consistency. Okay, so we can see here. Oh God, I still don't know what I'm going to do with this thing, this leaf. We'll see. Maybe it comes together at the end. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, so we can see here that there is some layering if you're really looking for it in terms of seeing a difference in shade like i can see it but i'm still probably going to add at least a little bit of maybe that avocado ink it might help it out so let's just leave that to dry for now let's eat some berries because they're good yeah, let's go with the avocado. I have to kind of, these two look so similar, I have to like tilt them a little bit to see which is which. Actually, should I come in with it? Yes, yeah, let's do this. Shake them a little bit. So how many of you have actually tried making your own ink? I want to know, because I had never done this before and it was like really exciting for me. <laughs> um, and it's, oh yes, I like this. Okay, perfect. This is what we're doing. Awesome. All right, yeah, that gives that gives it more of an interesting shading. Okay, here we go. Anyway, yeah, I've never done this. I remember when I was living in Ireland, I bought this book of Renaissance recipes. And one of the recipes was making black ink. And I always in turn intended on doing that. And I never did. And then I started traveling and that kind of just stayed in storage, that book. So actually I'll get to, I'm gonna be in Chicago again um, on in the, uh, in the fall season. I'm getting there last week of August, which I am so excited about. Oh my God, I'm going in tangents and like resting so much, but anyway. Uh, so point is, I'll be in Chicago, so I'll have access to that book again. So maybe we'll do a making inks part two or something. No promises, but actually it's, it may happen at some point. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've actually had this idea for a very long time and I just never really got around to it because it's just so easy to buy ink, obviously. It's not like I need to make my ink in order to be able to draw or write. So it's something that's very easy to just forget about. Um, oh my God, I love how these two inks shade together. Yes. Okay, I have finally found a purpose for the calendula ink. <laughs> I was so upset with the last video because it was so pale and boring. But, oh, this is so good. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think it's really good. <laughs> Point is, this has been very fun. And I highly recommend you guys to try it. These, uh, actually, another thing I wanted to test out is seeing how well they preserve, like how well does this time oil work in terms of preserving, because I have waited already about a week. I did that video, um, yeah, it was almost a week ago already, 
Uh, so these inks have been unopened, just sitting in a jar for at least five days. Definitely five days. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, and they smell just as good. Like they don't smell like they're rotten or anything. They smell like thyme oil actually, uh, which is great. Like the thyme essential oil. Oh, I really hate this now because this is turning out so smooth and nice. Maybe I'll end up putting something. I don't know. I want to ask you guys for ideas for obviously this video is going to be up and finished before you are able to comment. That's the plus side of live. What's it called? Live, live streams. Yes. You could give me ideas right now of what to do with that failed <laughs> first attempt. But actually, what do you guys think of that? Of a live stream? Oh no. What am I doing? Okay. I've been considering it. I would need like quite a bit of time in a quiet space, of course, which is a bit hard to find most of the time again by not having my own like desk and creative space. What's interesting about this ink is that it came out so like reddish brownish before, but now that I'm putting a light layer on top of the calendula ink, it just, it's like it blends in perfectly. I'm so surprised. That's the avocado one, by the way. Anyway, yes, live stream. So I don't know, like I rarely watch other people's live streams. I think that's why I keep being a little hesitant about it. Because I know, I know people out there watch it, but I don't know. I, I'm not one of those people, unfortunately. I should be, but... I just never watch live streams. I just, like, they, they tend to be really long, and... Yes, of course, sometimes, and many times, I like... Let me make sure they're still filming, yes. I like, um... Ooh, that's a lot of ink. I love drawing while watching a long YouTube video because it's sort of like there's someone drawing with you. Like that's one thing I miss so much about high school and our classes in high school that you just always had people to draw with. Um, and you just, I don't know, it's someone else who's in your element as well and you're sitting in this table and everybody's painting together and you talk about whatever you want to talk about or not if you don't want to and just listen to music but you have the option of talking to someone and it it was you know the art was a social experience as well and sometimes i would like come during lunch or during my free period and work in whatever i was working on I have just splashed this everywhere and I'm not mad at it. It looks kind of cool. And I remember that social, um, social aspect of art being just so pleasing and so rewarding. And I miss that very often. Art can get very lonely when you're not in school anymore. <laughs> but that's... I see the purpose of live streams because it's that. You get to have that again, you get to have someone to draw with. It's still through a camera, but it's, you know, it gives you a similar feeling. You can talk to them. But I never do it, and you would think I have. So usually when I want to draw with and feel like there's someone there with me or, you know, someone talking to me at the very least, I watch different, like, longer YouTube videos uh, that mostly about art, but also about fountain pens or whatever. There's, of course, the Goulet Pens Q&A videos, which are an hour long. Those are great, because... And there's so many of them, and I'm a little behind on them, actually. So next time, I have, like, three hours of them to watch. <laughs> but those are good. And then in terms of actual art ones, there is Jacqueline de Leon, or I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. I'll put her YouTube name in the screen. She does, well, 
it's like a recent thing, I guess. She, no, she did it a few months ago. She did one, and then she did one recently as well. She did these kind of sketch with me videos that are pretty long as well. They're about 40 minutes long. And it's so good because you just, she's sketching and you're sketching and it's very relaxing. Then I also like, oh yeah, Job's Journal. Um, that's his, yeah, Job's Journal. His uh, Journal and Java series. Those are also, also tend to be pretty long. They tend to be about 45 minutes to an hour long videos. That's another one that I love just watching. He just goes on rambles, sort of like I'm doing right now, and tangents, uh, and <laughs> talks as he journals uh, live. And so I guess that's kind of the inspiration that I had to do Enki Tea Time, is just sort of to do, provide that for people, provide a different type of that, of what I get from those videos. Just get um, a long video that I, that you guys can draw along with, or journal, or I don't know, do the dishes too, whatever you like, <laughs> whatever you need to do. Uh, although I hope the dishes aren't taking you as long as this video is taking, but you know, you know what I mean. Clean the house, I don't know. But preferably drawing with me, that's kind of the point with tea or coffee or wine or beer or whatever you want. Not that I'm using my channel to promote alcoholic beverages, all in moderation, of course, and only if you're of age in whatever country you're in. Goodness, I sound like my mother. <laughs> That's a good thing, I guess. She's cool. Okay, so we're almost done with these blueberries. I do love how this ink dries down. It's just such a lovely purple. It looks kind of like a dusty purple, which you guys know I love. I don't know if you guys know that actually. Have I mentioned that before? I might have. Yes. Okay, I really like this. I think afterwards I might actually come in with a brown fine liner and do some details. But for now, I'm going to do more shading on the blueberries. I know I haven't really used the avocado ink on its own, but I am going to use it for the stem. So you'll see some of it on its own as well, rather than just being a shade to the calendula. Okay, now let's see how this layers. <laughs> Did I close all of the tangents I just opened by talking or did I leave one of those topics unfinished? We will never know. Well, I will know when I edit. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. My space on the phone ran out and I didn't notice and I kept talking to myself <laughs> and drawing and oops. That's why these are all done now. But at least you saw me start and you'll some see me end it, the shading of the blueberries. So I guess I just saved you 10 minutes of your life. <laughs> but anyway, I was actually talking about uh, fountain pens and how... Okay, so yeah, let me start over. So on my last video, the one where I was making these inks, uh, somebody commented if I would use these inks in a fountain pen and if it's safe. And honestly, I mean, if you want to try it out and experiment, go for it. But be aware that it would be very much an experiment and it could go wrong. So don't use, you know, maybe don't use your expensive pens for this. Like I would maybe try it in a Platinum Preppy or a Pilot Varsity if you know how to refill those or something cheap, Jin Hao, I don't know, um, the Tiger, Flying Tiger, fountain pen, calligraphy fountain pens. I recently got one of those and it works pretty well. Pause, wait, tangent time again. This was driving me insane. <laughs> so I cut a little piece of this same notebook on the back, the notebook paper. This is the Midori uh, cotton notebook, by the way. 
so to cover this and draw on top of it because I just can't stand it it just doesn't match anything at all and if I could like come in with this ink and use it with the rest of the leaves and make them match that's fine but I don't want to use inks that are not the three homemade inks in this drawing so let's do that I have my little tape roller here goodness I got, <laughs> I got this tape roller from Muji when I was <sighs> what Muji did I get this in it was in Rome, yes. Um, there's a Muji in New York too, that's why I got a little confused. But anyway, I got it in Rome and it seemed like perfect in the beginning because it's so small and compact. So it's just so travel friendly. I love it for that. But like, what is this? I mean, it happens all the time and it just keeps like, it doesn't feed itself back at the same time as you're using it. And I don't know how to stop this from happening. So I just kind of just deal with it. But like, not, you know, I guess you could like make it fit in there and it's fine. But it's not, eh, not the best. The glue is great though. Like it, it sticks very well. I love it. It's, it's such good quality glue. It's such great packaging. It's just the actual system inside sucks but okay i'm gonna complete this leaf that we had here and then let's do the one that was here yeah so fountain pens um i would not so yeah the reason why i would not try it with nicer fountain pens or really i don't know if i'm gonna ever try with fountain pens maybe i will for the sake of experimentation but um, not anytime soon, probably, but it's it just, these are not like impeccably blended, right? Like I blend it with a fork <laughs> and I do see some particles in these inks. Like you can see, let's open this one because I'm about to use it anyway. You can see when I open it like here in the rim, like those are particles from whatever, from any of the ingredients we have used. So those particles would get on your feet and in your pen. So that's main, the main reason why I really wouldn't uh, suggest that you experiment it, <laughs> that you experiment with fountain pens. You do it at your own risk if you want to. I'm one who loves playing around with fountain pens and doing risky things. Like I love changing out nibs and trying to fit in other nibs and uh, changing feeds from one to the other. Like I love experimenting with fountain pens. I think that's part of the fun with fountain pens. That's part of the point. Why can I still see the green inside of this? <laughs> no, okay, let's see. Let's just, let's be patient. Patience, all right, with this drawing. Let me close this and let's work on the stem. Well, I kind of want to do the other. Let's finish this. <laughs> let's do another layer. I'm going to try to do a heavy layer and see if that works any better. I mean, I'm hoping the avocado, will, since it's darker, will help. This paper is not, it's clearly not the most ghosting and... Uh, bleed through friendly but I love it like the paper shows up the ink so well it never feathers like it's so feather proof but like you can see everything on the other side clearly oh no there we go yeah I should have put a paper between these I'll probably then use this paper just to, like practice calligraphy or something like that which yeah that's usually what I do with ruined pages um, well I talked about that in my sketchbook video um, about what to do with pages that you accidentally ruin. I talked about how I use postcards and I just put postcards a lot. But if you don't wanna do that, if it's like, like here, for example, there's obviously gonna be a postcard on this side because I can't do anything with that. And I don't also don't want to risk something from here damaging this side. But for this page, I wouldn't want to put another postcard because it's just a little bit. Like this page is still usable, just not for like a piece. 
so I would probably just use it to practice calligraphy since most of the page is still perfectly fine. Okay. I do like how this looks for that. I love this ink. It's just this brownish red. It's very it's very unique actually. Um Yes, my recommendation, stick with the pens and brushes like we're doing today, but experiment at your own risk. I do, did I talk about this before or after the, did I already talk about how I want to do this again with the book. Yeah, I think I talked about it before the camera stopped recording. Oh my god, I don't know now. I rewatched the last part to see where I ended up, but <laughs> oops, maybe one day I'll get like a real camera. But you know what? For now, like phones work. I mean, okay, maybe I'm saying this and you're like, no, mighty, come on, look at this video. It could be so much better. Yes, okay, obviously it could be so much better. But you know what? I can't afford an actual camera at the moment. And it's so space efficient in terms of traveling to just use your phone for everything. I think my goal is just like whenever I want to change my phone like that's my number one priority for the phone all I care about is that it has a good camera nothing else has to be good about it, it doesn't have to be pretty it doesn't have to be amazing like that was actually how I picked this phone this is I'm using if in case you're wondering I use the LG G6 phone um, let's see how this works out the LG G6 which is like the camera is basically like comparable to like the iPhone 7 and the Galaxy 7 is that that generation of, of phones so of course the 8 I, I think we're in Galaxy 8 is the iPhone 8 uh, I know nothing about what like I, I'm really out of the loop with the iPhones because I obviously don't use an iPhone so I don't know but okay layer 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 so it didn't entirely cover the green, but it looks a hell of a lot better. <laughs> Maybe we'll add another leaf over here. Or, yeah, let's do that. Because then this could be like the shadow, shade, shade from the previous one, right? Ooh, also... I want to mention how long do these last? Like, okay, clearly you can see this one has less than this one because I removed a bit, quite a bit to avoid too much contamination from the green ink from the beginning. Oh my god, I forgot what color blue from the blue ink in the beginning of this video. But other than that, like these lasts a lot like you only need a little bit you get really nice shading from them i am so pleased with these inks <laughs> okay i think this does help let me remove a little bit here so it doesn't pull in the edge of the piece of paper that we put in now i still don't know do i want to use white or brown for doing some or should I just leave it like that? I don't think, you know what? They kind of look like the black currants that I'm eating. Although I'm gonna, I'm about to do a blueberry quote, but <laughs> I kind of don't want to add any more lines with fine liners because I like how subtle this looks. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Let's uh, bring in the fountain, not the fountain pen, <laughs> after I talked for it two hours about how to about not using fountain pens with these uh, dip pen and of course the blackberry ink the quote says my last meal on earth I would love it to be a bowl of blueberries with cold cream by Renee Redzepi I am 90% sure I'm misspelling I'm not misspelling mispronouncing that Redzepi Redzepi mm, okay 
he's Danish, a Danish chef. If anybody knows who he is and knows how to pronounce it, let me know. Um, actually, you know what? Eh, rewind. I'm going to do some lines here because I don't want this to be like... <sighs> so, fast forward time. Okay, back to real time. You know what? I'm not very mad at this anymore. I know you can still see it. I know it's not perfect, but this is my sketchbook and it doesn't need to be perfect like I've said many times. <laughs> okay, it's a little hard to talk while doing calligraphy, but I'm gonna try. Hopefully I don't end up writing what I'm saying. Says mighty, and then she stops talking. <laughs> yeah, I don't like starting over, especially on my sketchbook. Like, of course, if I'm, if I'm like working on a full big piece and I completely ruin it, well, I try to fix it, of course, but especially if it if it's like a commission or something and it needs to be perfect, of course, I'm gonna start over if I ruin it, but. If it's my sketchbook, like, no, no, troubleshooting is part of the fun. I'm going to make it work. Starting over kind of kills the fun of it, because then you just, it's like, okay, well, now that I'm starting over, now it needs to be perfect. Now I can't make another mistake. It's like, no, you can always make mistakes. I will look back at this, and you know what? I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh. Seeing the disastrous blowing of the beginning that I was not expecting at all. That is, is horrible, but you know what? Whatever, it's okay. <laughs> Embrace our mistakes. As for calligraphy, I am currently well, I have been for the past few weeks. Oh my god, sorry about the cars. Sorry about all the cars. I know there's been a lot. I'm just sort of doing my best to ignore them because I have another choice. But so I've been in the last few weeks learning Roman rustic, which is the first one of the uh, medieval scripts because I want to start teaching you guys some calligraphy. I want to start a series where I teach you medieval scripts and medieval styles of calligraphy. And I want to go in chronological order. I want to go like from the start and work our way through the development of the calligraphy styles. This one, which is the one I do all the time, of course, is my favorite, Uncio. But I want to start from the start, which is Roman Rustic, and from the start of the medieval times, of course, there's like the Roman capitals, which came before, but that's not medieval, so we can skip that. <laughs> it's not, I'm gonna, I have my focus very clear. Anyway, kind of, I'm aiming to start that sometime next month in September. Kind of like with the spirit of back to school, even though I'm not going back to school. But for those of us who are not going back to school, this would be a fun thing. That's one thing that I really hate when I'm doing calligraphy and I run out of space. It's just, ugh, there's no way of fixing that. <laughs> I'm making it look on purpose. Yeah, so what do you guys think about learning calligraphy? Because I think my main motivation for it is that when I started doing medieval calligraphy, it was just so hard to find online resources to learn. Other than, of course, you can always just find pictures and imitate it. But someone to actually teach me like, I remember looking all over Skillshare, and Skillshare, not sponsored by the way, but I wish, uh, Skillshare does have quite a few 
um, courses on Gothic calligraphy, which I took and they're really great, but I wanted to go further in terms of medieval calligraphy. If somebody knows of a Skillshare class out there for medieval styles, please tell me. I would love to check it out. But anyway, I just decided why not just make my own? I will, of course, include all of the sources that I've been using to learn, whether it's online or a book. I have a really great book that I've been using that I will talk about in that video whenever I do it. as you can tell I was not able to fit the whole quote in the page I clearly did not plan this through very well I guess now in retrospect looking at it I could have put my last meal on earth over here in this white space that we have here instead of here and then use this whole line this whole space for I would love it to be a bowl of blueberries with cold cream but this is why it's a sketchbook it was experimenting and this is, you know what, I'm, I'm happy with how it came out. I'm happy with how this got better. I um, love the shading. Let me take the phone and give you a, a closer look. Okay, here you can take a look of the shading variation of the ink, especially in the calligraphy area, because here, of course, I layered it for the shading and the uh, drawing part but I love how well it naturally shades here in that A in last for example it has some really nice variation that E and Mio I am really happy with how this turned out and happy with using this for calligraphy oh lost focus okay here we go and there we go that's the finished piece and we're done! Thank you guys so much for joining me in this. I really thoroughly enjoyed using these inks. Um, they blend well, they... well, you know, they blend. I wouldn't say their main -ish thing is blending, but they layer well, which is good enough. Uh, they layer well, they work well with uh, each other and with itself in order to create a shading variation in terms of layers. They smell great using this. It smells like time essential oil, um, time essential oil the whole time. Right. Yes. I think it still smells on the paper. You can still smell the, uh, <laughs> the time. So that's really awesome. Actually, do the old ones still smell? Although maybe... No, the smell goes away after a while. The swatches that we did last week for the video do not smell anymore. But at least, you know, within the day or so, maybe they they still smell and it, it looks good. I like it. I like it, especially for the first time trying it out. I think these things have a lot of potential. You can realistically do something really cool with them, uh, whether it's... Uh, drawing or calligraphy so I now even more highly recommend you try them out because it's fun to do it's fun to make it's a fun project and also it gives really cool results so thank you so much for joining me I'll see you next week with another video which will be the Montreal um, journal with me video so I'll see you then for that have a fantastic day bye <laughs>